So, so far in our radical videos, we've seen how to simplify radicals with just numbers, and we've seen how to simplify radicals with variables in them. But in both of those specific examples, it's been radicals that have simplified evenly. In this example, we're going to work radicals that don't simplify evenly, and to be honest, this will be more of the case than the other situations. So let's go ahead and jump right into my analogy to try and help you figure out how these work out. And what I like to call it is my good pie, bad pie method. Seems kind of crazy at first, but I guarantee it will help you try and sort this all out overall. So hypothetically, you're trying to make a pie from somewhat scratch. By somewhat scratch, I'm meaning we have to do very minimal work whatsoever. So you go to your local grocery store, you buy yourself a pie pan, you buy yourself a pie crust that's already made, it's just rolled up, all you have to do is unroll it. You buy yourself a can of pie filling, and that's all you have to do to make this pie. What we're going to talk about in my good pie, bad pie method is specifically the crust part of this. So in my first picture here, I have... This person's actually making their pie crust from scratch. They're rolling it out. But even if you've bought your pie crust, all you have to do is roll it out. You don't have to mix anything whatsoever. Now, once you get your pie crust rolled out, your next thing to do is to put it in your pan, which is this picture here. But if you notice this here, your pie crust almost never fits perfectly into your pan. So what you have to do then is you have to cut off all this extra pie crust around the edges. And so that's what this example, this third picture is doing here. They're cutting off all that extra pie. Now after that, you dump in your pie filling, you put in your extra pie crust on top. If you want to, you put it in the oven and you've got your pie. You're good to go. So now that I've made you all hungry with pie, your question is, is how does that exactly fit into radicals, into math class? And so now let me try and answer that question for you. And specifically, I'm going to focus on this picture here. So when I put this pie crust into my pan, I'm going to use the pie crust on the inside. And so that is what I call my good pie. That's the pie that we're actually going to use. We're going to bake it. We're going to eat it, so on and so forth. Now, all this extra pie crust are on the outside, the crust that they're cutting off over here, this leftover, that's what I'm going to call my bad pie because that pie crust we're most likely not going to use. Maybe we might put it together to make another pie crust out of it or most likely we're going to feed it to our dog that's sitting there begging for something to eat. Okay. So what goes on the inside of this pie is my good pie, and what's my leftovers over here, that's my bad pie. That's exactly how it's going to work with roots. I'm going to simplify some of the root on the inside, my good pie, and I'm going to be just left over with some other part of my root, which is what I'll call my bad pie. So I have one specific example down here, but we'll see this in plenty of other examples here in a minute. The cube root of C to the fifth. Now what this means is I'm trying to take groupings of three out here, but I know that I actually have five of these C's. So I'm writing this out in full detail again, but normally again we won't see this. I'm only showing you this here to explain how all this pi method works. So if I want to take out a grouping of three, that gives me one grouping of three of these C's. But notice I have two C's left over. Well, this is going to split into my good pi and my bad pi. So the way I typically write this out is I go ahead and set up my two square roots. And that actually uses the second property that I just showed you in the last video. My first square root is what I call my good pi, and my second square root is what I call my bad pi. In my first square root, I write it as c to the third. In my bad pi, I have two c's left over, so that becomes c squared. Now, the reason that this first square root is my good pi is because that's what fits into my pi pan evenly, or that's what fits into my cube root evenly. 
because my cube and my cube root cancel out. And so that pi, my good pi simplifies to just give me c. And this bad pi, or these leftovers over here, I cannot absolutely do anything with them. All I need to do is copy them down to my next step, which is the cube root of c squared. So I have simplified this using my good pi and my bad pi method. Now, it might not make a whole lot of sense at this point, but hopefully the more examples that I work through, all this pi nonsense starts to make sense for you. So let's see some more of these examples. So notice that I have here, in example number one here, I only have numbers where in my last one, I only had variables. And then in example two and example three, I have all of the above. It's all gonna work out the exact same way. So let's start with example one with numbers. Now, if I think to this, square root of 72 does not come out evenly. And if you don't believe me, then I suggest that you write down the list of squares. Starting with one squared is one, two squared is 4, and so on and so forth. So I suggest that you pause the video and write out your list of squares all the way up to 10 squared at the minimum. Okay, so you can see that I have them written out here, but I don't have them worked out. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, and if you can go past that, that's awesome. Now, a lot of times I have students come to me and say, well, why do I need to know these numbers? Because my calculator will do that. Yes, your calculator will do that, but you will have instances in this class where things will be timed. So if you have to spend 10 minutes typing things into your calculator or 30 seconds just reciting things that you have memorized, that's going to make a world of difference on that timed exam. So how does this fit in with example one? Well, if we look at square root of 72, we notice that 72 is not on this list, meaning the square root of 72 does not come out evenly or 72 is not all good pi. Well, if it's not all good pi, let's break it down to what is good pi and what isn't good pi or our bad pi. So what we want to do is we want to divide 72 into two numbers. So this has to be a number times a number to give me 72. It has to be multiplied. But most importantly, this first number here is going to go into my first square root meaning it has to be good pi, a.k.a. it has to be a square because I want it to come out evenly. So I look at my list of squares over here, and I try and figure out which of these numbers goes evenly into 72. And at first glance, you might notice that 9 goes into 72 evenly. You might break it down as 9 times 8. Now that's not a bad start, but if I look at the square root of eight over here, I can actually break that down again as good pi and bad pi because eight divides by four and four is a square, so that can also be considered good pi. So not only do you wanna just divide it by any square, you wanna divide it by the largest square possible. So instead of using nine and eight, let me try and figure out the largest square that goes into 72 evenly. And hopefully after some time, you figured out that the best answer is 36. So 36 is my good pi because it's a square and because it goes into 72 evenly by multiplication. And my leftovers or my bad pi is two because 36 times two gives me 72. Now the whole reason that I want this to be a square in the first place is because I now wanna take the square root of it. So the square root of 36 gives me six and I have my leftovers of two. And that is my final answer in this example. 
square root of 72 simplifies to be 6 times square root of 2. Because of time, I'm going to stop this video here, but in the next video, I'm going to work those last two examples that you see at the bottom of your screen.